Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamat, Yehovah Malak, Yami Rakis, Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Theos, Yehovah Erdanai, Yehovah Elohim, Kurios Theos Pantakreta, Kurios Theos Pistos, Elda et Ehova, El Emuna Yehova, Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios O Pantakreta, Baslios Basleon Kai Kurios Kurion, Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Nimahagion Pantakreta, Gadol Gadol Gebura, Zan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, Yel Nakum Yehova, Yel Nakum Yapa, Yehova Yish Malkam, Yehova Shamma, Derek Emunabakar, Meshfat Shava, the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and disnurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding that why Lord our God upholds us or sustains us. In Psalms 54.4, Lord God the Holy Ghost has penned and kept for us in the pictographical representation of this word which teaches the importance as such why Lord God the Father has penned and kept us in this church age. Indeed, the scripture over there in Psalms 54 4, not only to the church age, it applies to every dispensation of God's plan. But over here specifically, we read the importance why God the Father in His grace for every human being on this earth He upholds so that there could know Christ 
knowing Christ is eternal life. And after knowing Christ, or after salvation in Christ, what next? Here in this passage we have, in this one simple verse of Psalm 54, 4, we have the two things being answered. Where is the salvation and who is the salvation? And after salvation, what he does? So dear brethren, sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ which we shall continue after this prayer which God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. Using the privacy of your priesthood to rebound, let's learn the mind of Christ over here given for us, which is our life. And since we have been upholded by the Lord our God or sustained by Lord God the Father in heaven. Every breath of our life we should be counted before the men of this perishing world that we are wise. And what is wise and how is wise we shall look after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of Lord to learn the word. Father, we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date so that we could learn and edify and be that which is your will accepted on this earth. So that when we perform your will and then we come back into the presence, you could not be ashamed to call that you are our God. But rather, you could be having a great delight and desire the way how we took Enoch to see us back home when we have completed your work faithfully on this earth. So, Father, having to understand these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. Here over in Psalms chapter 54 in verse 4, Elohim, is my helper, he says. The word helper is called Azar. And the word over here meant to say, to open up my eyes, to make me to understand, to use the weapons, to dig and take or search diligently, or having a consciousness to realize who is true God or what is true God. And thus making in our sense through our head to renovate the standards of our thinking is what the word Azar is all about. The first thing in this pictographical representation for the word Azar, making your eyes to be fixed upon to know after that what? Are you sure that you're going to go to heaven if you don't have Christ? Well, over here on this earth you have time, diligently seek and search. Maybe from the scriptures, or dogmas, or the things which you have penned and kept for yourselves. Diligently search. Diligently make a way of that to realize. And if you can find in the scriptures, because Satan has already blinded the eyes of the world of this man, so that they should not see the glorious gospel of my Christ which shineth. And in order to help Satan, the so-called Christendom men, being not renovated in the standards of the thinking, 
or in simple words to teach as we have been reading. Being after the falling manner of Christ, being Christians. If you don't have alatiya, the truth, if you don't follow righteousness, dikaya sune, and that which is Lord God's accepted will, agate sune, if you don't have these three characters, alatiya, dikaya sune, and agate sune, then you can never represent my Christ in your body. You could only be a, a lie to the world, but not truth. Never you will be to this world. So being a Christian, you have to be joining as disciples. You have to be well trained to grow up into grammatiers. New Testament theologians, so that you could answer back to those people who are foolish and ignorant in First Peter chapter 3, what we read that conversation. If they would ever ask, what is the reason why you believe in Christ? What is the purpose of believing in Christ? Your answer should be ready to shut the mouth of this ignorant, foolish people in order to become the Word of God, the plan of God, through this church age, the great and unique work of God the Father given to us, make known to this world, shine forth Christ in you like light luminaries. Let them realize that we are not the adult sons of darkness or night, but we are the adult sons of light and day. So that there is no sleep nor rest for us. Because we are not of darkness. The things they do, they do in darkness. The things they work out, they work out in darkness. But we are the children of light. And the things what they do in darkness, ignorance about the divine things. Not having proper fear, not having proper respect. Such being ignorant about divine things, they lead up into misery and hell. But he says you are children of light, you cannot be in darkness, therefore you need to know the truth, you need to be prepared to answer them in First Peter 3, why you are accepting Christ, why you believe Christ, why you walk according to Christ. And becoming as a Christian to shine forth in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations is what God the Father has chosen you elected you before the foundation of the world, then how much more we should be in the business of becoming like Christ so that we could make known to these people that Lord God alone is the helper. By that we meant to say Azar. You have to fix upon your eyes as Isaiah chapter 35 teaches to us. This is the way, walk you in that, throw off all your idols, he said over there. And there also uses the word menstrual cloth, the way how they throw away the menstrual cloth, they, the same manner they throw away the idols. And he says, this is the only way, walk you in that. In order to make them to understand, this is the only way, or make them to realize God the Father has set forth for us. His great many men examples for us in the Bible, those who obeyed, those who walked in truth, those who did that which was wisdom in the sight of the Lord of our God, that is nothing but to hear and to obey and to apply and practice. He set forth many people for us as an example in Christ. As we look upon the rejection of Saul, and 2 Samuel chapter 16, when David was walking along after that Absalom rebellion, there we get the son of Saul, already who is a lame, the Cushai. He says, you have taken kingdom from, my, from, from the things pertaining to Saul. We have that passage. And he goes on to curse. 
You know, here we have two things to learn. If you are straight and accord with the word of the Lord our God, though the righteous may fall again, they will stand up, says the word. But there in the case of Saul, we look his rejection over there in doing and fulfilling the work of the Lord in 1 Samuel chapter 15 in verses 18 and following. And the man who once drew out or put out all the witchcrafts and the wizards and the necromancers, the same man goes to witch of endure. So the curse of the father continues upon this Kushai or in this family. And we find that man being lame. But those who walk upright, he said, in Psalms 1 to 2, their children will be mighty. So wisdom is nothing but to fulfill and obey the commandments of the word of the Lord of a God. If in your home, if there is anyone who is not successful, the reason is you haven't made them to walk in the fear of the Lord of a God, which is called to be wisdom. You haven't made them to understand the right and true importance of this great and unique word of my Christ. Therefore, when they walk without wisdom or without having to shine forth as light luminaries, without having to know, to make known to this world, to understand that we Christians are the light of the world, make, showing them the path of true eternal God. And if you're not organizing your character according to the word of God, then you have been sponsoring or you have been adding a fuel to the schemes and strategy of Satan in this life. Because already Satan has blinded the eyes of this man. He doesn't want them to know my Christ. Now you, when you have failed to show them, when you have failed to make them to dig and take the weapons of warfare, when you have failed them to realize the unique importance, as the word of God says, to have their brain or head renovated with the proper thinking of Christ. When you fail that, then you are not making them Christ of our Lord of our God is Azar. But Psalms 54 4 teaches, Behold, God is my helper. And the word Elohim, whenever you look, the pictographical representation, number one, is Aleph, the work of a bull. And the second one is Lamath, shepherd's staff. Whenever you is Lord God, the purpose of Lord God or God, which is there for you, Jehovah Elohim, what we call. He gives you in his vigor and valor of that strength, or in that energy to make you to be the disciples. Nothing else than that, to make you to be the disciples. Elohim itself, the Aleph energy, Lamad staff, and the word Lamad is nothing but Mantano plus Didasco. Elohim wants you all to be the disciples in the vigor and valor of the Spirit of Christ. That's the vigor and valor, Aleph energy. Why we call the representation of the four animals over there, including a man. When we look upon the four living beasts, the four living creatures, one of them is a bull. Lion in its might, eagle in its great strength of attitude. Man, to synchronize, we read that. And the fourth one being the bull, or the second one being the bull. And this bull, no matter whatever load you put, no matter whatsoever the things which they think it could be hard, bull just carries it. That's the power of the muzzles of the bull. Now, Elohim, he puts that load and burden upon us. Therefore, he said in Matthew 11, 30 and 31, My yoke is easy, my burden is light. He says in very simple words, My yoke is easy. 
That means the vigor and valor of a bull I have given to you. And you can be my fond ones or philos ones, as the Greek says, because it is not agape. Like Abraham was called to be the friend of God, philos of God. The same thing he said for us in John 15, 14. Whatsoever I have commanded, you are mandated you. And if you do that, then you are my friends. That meant to say, I have given you sufficient a much more than sufficient energy in your body, like that I'll have strength. You do not worry about the commandments, you do not worry about the obstacles, you do not worry about the struggles. If you are my disciple, growing up into grammatias, it is I whose eyes run to and fro, and I will kazak you, and I will make you to be with me perfect. That's what we read in Second Chronicles 16.9. So whatever may be the pressure, he says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, 1 John 4, 4. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. But he has given us a spirit of dunamai, agape love, sophronismos. In 1 John 4, 4, greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. In everything what God the Father has given unto us is something great and unique. So that Aleph energy, that Aleph bull of a power he has given for us in making disciples of all the nations. He has given you that vigor and valor to be like the standards of growing up as disciples into grammatias. And these disciples who have grown up into grammatias, they should in return, in order to achieve the work of the Lord or finish the work of the Lord, we read that word, kalal. In the mission given to Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15 in verse 19, as he said over there in Numbers chapter 14 in verse 6, which is the pain of our heart, we read the word Blite, yakol, yakol, and the word over there, God is not able to deliver them. And there we read a grown up grammatias who should in return go and make seven disciples, and those seven disciples should become into eight grammatias men again. That's what we find over there in the structure of Mika 5 5. And God the Father gives us this vigor and valor in the strength of His work, in the power of His Spirit. You know, the dunamis power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. It's not just a simple way what you can take upon your tongue and you can say dunamai. No. It's the greatest power. Therefore, we read in Zechariah 4, 6, Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit, said the Lord God of hosts. The spiritual power, what he has given, is something great. So he says, you can go and get and do the things. No excuse. You can make seven disciples because you are grown up into grammatias, and you can make eight principal men. And when you fail there, the work of every individual believer in Christ, which he has to make them, which he has to lead them, which he has to grow up into grammatia as an in return make seven disciples and eight principal men. If he fails there, if he isn't doing that, again, you stand a witness for blithe yakol yakol. You meant to say, God is not able in your life. But the word Elohim, he has given you that vigor and valor. Every believer has been given or been made to be indwelt with such kind of a great power. If you would wake up, that power is given to you only when you are making up your tracks or your life oriented at the maturity of your age, when you reach a maturity, when you reach a God consciousness, or when you reach the fear of the Lord, only in the sense of understanding that we have been given the authority or the exousia power, the word again in John 1 12. You have been given not dunamis power over there, but exousia, the authority, 
to become the technia children of God. And in John 1 to 12, why he has given to become the technia children of God? Since you have been born by the will of God, the Father, not by the will of the flesh of your men or blood of your men, but because of the will of God the Father, he gave you the power to become the disciples. The word technia meant to say disciples. And over here, the word Elohim, what we find in this both Aleph followed by that word Lamad, God has given you that immense power. Lord God has given you such kind of a great power. You have to be disciples. And when you will be disciples, he says, God is my helper. Being born in Christ, it doesn't mean to say that you are being automatically in the standards of a mature man or become a wise man. No. When you are proving God is your helper, he has shown you the salvation, he has shown you your eyes to fix upon the weapons which has given to you to dig and take or to know the truth or in acquiring or in search of truth. Because people in this world are in search of many things. They plan three, three months earlier. They want to go to the cliffs or to the rocks or below the rocks and they want to find what wealth is there. But here when we come to Christianity, you're searching something of an unending mine of gold wealth. And gold is Lord God, the Holy Ghost. That will never end. So I've been given these weapons of warfare or in the weapons of digging and taking. That's the matak, what we find. The word azar, having your eyes fixed upon God, using that weapon of matak. And then making up the thinking of the men to be renovated. Believing in Christ, it doesn't assure that your life will be with bed of roses. That's what today people are preaching falsely. Believing in Christ is saying your eyes should be fixed upon the daily cross which you need to carry, as Christ our Lord of God said. Taking up your cross and following me, then only you are worthy of me. That's the word. The matak weapons or the weapons what you have to dig and take is what you have your daily burden of your portion to carry. As you sustain not without your physical food on this earth, so your inner man also has to take the prescribed portion of Bible doctrine given to you. Every day you have that burden. Every day you need to come and take up that doctrine. So when God is your helper, already Elohim in his Aleph energy, he has made you to be the disciples. No matter what, he wants your eyes to be fixed upon the weapons of warfare or the weapons which could search and diligently take in. And through these weapons, he wants to renovate the standards of your thinking. Over here, the first weapon is Lord God, the Holy Ghost. And the second weapon is the mentoring ministry of, of a pastor teacher to whom this Dorian or the pastor teacher bona fide gift has been given. Under that process, diligent study of the word of God, iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, diligent study. No excuse, dear brethren, if you are not studying in the word of God, if you are not making up your life according to the mind of Christ. Diligent study is what needed. And God the Father uses those men who are faithfully prepared. Diligent study. And thus, He is going to send those who are prepared. Because in every examination of their life, they need to pass this test. 
In every examination of this life, they have to be well prepared. No matter whatever may be the details. In every arena of the calling of the Lord of a God, because when they open up their mouth, they have to open up their mouth not according to the standards of men, to impress men, or to please men, or to get aligned with men. No, no matter whatever may be the pressure, they want to make you to align to the word of God. It is not what we talk, their rules and their terms and their conditions. It is what we talk, my Lord God, the Father's rule. His prescription, His demands. Not what we want or not what the itching ears men will love to hear, no. We want them to understand the rules of the Word of God. In Jeremiah 23, the favorite passage, what we have been teaching to you, he says, if they have been sent by me, they would make you to stand in the counsel of the Word of the Lord, my God, by making you to turn away from the evil ways. In Jeremiah chapter 8, he says one word. They have rejected the word of the Lord of a God. What wisdom is there in them? In Jeremiah 7, we have been reading that this man, they have made the things which are not even there in the mind of God to practice giving their sons and daughters to be put under fire of Tophet. So he calls it will be called as a slaughter valley, not the valley of Benom. Again over there when we look in Jeremiah 23, he says, These are the people that have made the name of my or the character of my God to be changed, to be replaced. And instead of the character of my God or the things of my God or the word of my Lord God, they have established the things pertaining to Baal. What a great pain it would be for us to look. If they have been with the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, the all sufficiency of his weapons, they wouldn't be claptes as we noted yesterday. There would be a constant care of the flock as we read upon the life of David. The man, when he came to look upon Goliath, first to give food, and then he looks upon the people out there for 40 days. And then he says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And the brother says, What the matter with you? What have you done with the flock? And David says, I have handed it to a care of a proper person. And that's what we read yesterday from Ezekiel 34. Because God the Father intention over there is very, very simple. Protect the flock with the right word of God. Such will be the men and this will be the weapons because in Revelation 1 he says, the seven spirits who are being the seven angels to the seven churches, the seven golden candlesticks, what he mentions. These are always coming from the right hand of God and they're always present in the presence of God the Father. And there is a great joy of glory in Ezekiel chapter 3 in verse 12. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Barak. The reason why he mentions there because whenever the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher who is doing the work of the Lord of a God, there is a great joy constantly crying out in the heaven, blessed and be the name of my Lord for its full glory. Because the word of God, when we have been expounding and when we have been teaching, that's the glory of God. That's the essence of God. 
and that has since in the time of Jeremiah 23, the false prophets, that essence and character of my God, they have changed it into Baal. Today, instead of Christ, they have changed it into Antichrist, many false spirits. The spirits who do not emphasize daily carrying your cross. The spirits which do not come to teach to you every day, emphasizing word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. You can know them by their fruits. And in Matthew 7, we look, they stand, they try to stand, saying that, Lord, Lord, haven't we done this? Haven't we done that? God the Father says, in accord with fact and truth, I confess and I say unto you, I never knew you, because you haven't done the will of God the Father. And what is the will of God the Father? The logic is very simple. Join as disciples, grow up into grammatias. And in return, go and make disciples of all the nations as Micah 5, 5 teaches to us. Furthermore, every grown-up grammatia should make seven disciples and eight principal men. The target is number 15, 7 plus 8. <laughs> every individual believer should have spiritual children. As in the olden days, some of them they used to have. When we look in the book of Kings, he had 70 children, 70 male, you know. The records about them has been recorded. And they used to say, this king with so many wives, he had so many children, so many children, you know. Now every individual believer in Christ, grown up into grammatias, whether he has his physical children or not, he should have his spiritual children at least minimum 15 as we look seven shepherds and eight principal men those shepherds are the people who would guard the word of God so you make them to grow up into grammatias seven and those seven grammatias should be again followed by eight principal men who will be the frontiers, who will be the entrepreneurs to go ahead in establishing the mind of Christ in the pulpits. Every believer should have minimum 15 spiritual children. And that's the duty. That's the work of the shepherd. That's why he trains you up. That's why God the Holy Ghost has penned so clearly, carry up your cross every day, follow my Christ, then only you are done the will of God the Father. Tomorrow, no doubt, you may cry out saying, Lord, Lord, I ate in your presence, we drank in your presence, we heard your word in the streets. But God the Father would say, I never knew you who you are. Brethren, you need to wake up, as we have been illustrating for you from Revelation 21, 8 as well. The second death, how you would escape the second death. Loving lie, the last point over there, loving lie and making a lie. The same thing he writes in Revelation, again, 22 in verse number 4, we find that. The people who love lie and make lie. Anything which is not there for you in accord with the character of my Christ, with the essence of the word of the Lord our God, Anything what you're practicing in your pulpits which is not in accord with the mind of Christ, dear brethren, that's a lie. And if you're not coming every day, Proverbs 8, 34 through 36, to stand at the doorpost of the temple of the living Lord of a God and to learn Bible doctrine, if you're not coming every day, if you're not making that to be your practice, then you are a liar. Be careful about your second death. Every day. You have been said to carry your cross every day under the dunamis power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, in His Spirit, which has been given. You have to be disciplined. You have to be a technia believer. And if you are not a disciple, and if you think you are a Christian, even in Acts 11, we look for a purpose of training for more than one year. Both of them, they trained, and those disciples were called for the first time Christians. And today, people have forgot the word of discipleship, even in the translations of English. They don't say, go and make disciples. They would say, go and make Christians. We are really not able to understand why they have changed these words. 
the essence what we find in the original Greek. He says, Matatias. In Acts 14, 21, in spite of being put to death or almost all put to death by the men of Antioch and Iconium, when he comes back from that death of a way of a life, and there we look upon his record in 2 Corinthians 12, 1, 14 years ago, a man in flesh or not, we do not know. The Rimata declarations, what he has heard in the heaven, he said those things we are not permitted now to teach. But rather, he says now, very, very important words. He goes now, first evangelism, that's what God is my helper over here in Psalm 54, 4. And then he says the very second thing. Matatias hikanao. It is not as many as the disciples have been taught. No, he made them to be rendered fit. The same thing over there, what we look in Colossians 1, 2, and hikanao, into the inheritance of the saints among the light. That means to qualify you to render fit till the time you could be perfect. And what is the word perfect? He writes over there in Colossians 1, 24-29, teaching them the word, even the mystery doctrine, giving them the complete discourse of the mind of Christ, what he has done in Acts chapter 20, verses 24-32. through 32. That's perfection, that's salilios. And he wants you all to be complete, plero o status quo till they all could come to perfection. That's what Hikanao is all about. And there you find only one verse for Acts 14, 21 to be a cross-reference, which is Matthew 28, 19. Because in 28, 19, go and teach, make disciples by teaching to them all the things which you have been taught by the word of God. All the things, no compromise, all the things. You haven't even thought. <laughs> and Lord of a God over there in Luke chapter 24 on the way to Amasmus when he's teaching to his two disciples. He first teaches them from the book of Moses and then the prophets. He started to expound to them about Christ. People today foolishly they say who want the Old Testament stupid fellows. If Old Testament is like a Adama or a man then a woman who cometh out from the bone of an Adama or Isha will be the New Testament. And they both are complete. That's what the Bible is all about, like the Old and New Testament. Christ our Lord our God knows the importance about the prophets, about the teachings of, of this Moses. Because the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, is the same and in the mission work of his, in the standards of his epistles, in the standards of his gospels, he taught, referring back several times as it has been written. He claims to those Pharisees and scribes, how have you read, what have you read? And people today don't understand the wisdom of the Lord. So God the Father, in His grace, provides the Dorian gifted that to male, not female, woman has never been authorized to stand against men, to have authority over the men and teach. And people may claim, why can't a woman preach? You have the tendency to add and delete, as in the life of Eve, what we have looked. Though the word says, you shall not eat the fruit of it, she said you shall not even touch the tree. And as Lord God, she asked to address my Lord with great respect. When Satan says God, woman also follows God. And the importance, what you should stress, Surely you shall die, said the Lord of a God, and she says, Lust you shall die. And besides that, in her metamorphisms, from where earlier she was recreation, and now she becomes procreation during the time of her monthly menses. She cannot come to be in the touch of the holy things. That's what we look in the Old Testament. She has to be outside. And Albert Banners, in his commentary, when he writes about the divine parchments, 
If a woman during the time of her monthly menses, if ever she has been touching them, better to burn them off, he says, rather than she would defile. And the ministry of the word of Lord of our God follows in the church is so clear. Every day you have to teach. Every day, every day, every day. It's not weekly ones. As these people, they're following and practicing. They're making once again the same mistake of the prophets, what they have done in the time of Jeremiah 23. They exchanged the name of my God and the character of my God for Baal. They have made them to forget the name of my Lord. They forget the character of my God. Today as well you find they have absolutely forgotten the character of my God, the name of my Christ. If they would have followed or they would have remembered the name of my Christ and the character of my Christ, every pulpit would teach day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, because even the prophets, what he has sent them, he says he sent them by rising them up early, every day they would come and pronounce you the looking into the character of Christ. Daily they came to pronounce, every day. And if the work of the Lord of a God is every day, day by day, word by word, then how much more? the practices being practiced in our pulpits and the things what the word of Lord God says do match. So now the woman, when she is having a monthly menses, how she could come and teach every day. That's why, you know, they love to have women to be preachers for you because these men themselves, weekly ones, they come and preach, they have become double the category and the size of a woman in their thinking and in their menstrual problem. Three days a woman, if she is right and good in a hormonal balance, she will be having the dates or what you call menstrual sickness, whatsoever it is. But this man, three plus three, six days, they are in menstrual sickness. Therefore, they are not having guts enough to come and teach because they are not well prepared and above all, they haven't been sent by my Lord. If God the Father would have chosen them, if they have been sent by the Lord of a God, they would no doubt teach according to the mind of Christ. They would use this all of energy to become the disciples. They would make them to understand, fix your eyes upon the instruments or the weapons of warfare, what God the Father has given, and go back to renovate the standards of your thinking because believing Christ is not the end. Believing Christ is the beginning for this great heavenly life of, of polytheism of plural privileges which have been given for us. So in order to begin there, you have been told, look upon the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. Look into the ministry where they are daily teaching to you the word of God freely, not charging. No need to beg to ask you to give you the money. No need to beg to ask you to pay the tithes because the New Testament doesn't talk about the tithes. And the emphasis why we come to New Testament and why not in the Old Testament? The law which was been given in the Old Testament, they used to go and pay in the, in the temple court where it has to be along with the temple of which Solomon built again later on renovated by three more persons still to the Zerubbabel. There they used to have that office where they have to go and store the tithe. If they're practicing that tithe now in your pulpits to beg and to take, then you also ought to practice the sacrifices which you have to give in the temple gate. But you're not doing that sacrifices. Then why you want a tithe? The New Testament, as God prospers in your heart, so you give. Second Corinthians 9, all many Love and know that scripture, cheerful lover, God loveth, hilarious lover. Don't come for money. Don't beg money. Money is the root cause for all evil. God the Father wants only one thing from you. What he has given freely, give that freely. You haven't got it by your thinking of talent or spending of time. No, it is the 
Dorian gift, gracious gift, which has been given by God the Father in giving you this work of Lord God the Holy Ghost and the burden to carry. Do it faithfully. Do it diligently. Do not be a burden to others as Apostle Paul teaches us a pattern. He wasn't burdened to anyone. With his own hand, he paid the rent. He was never a burden. The only thing what we are worried about and what we shall be burdened is that we are using the grace of my Christ in vain glory. We are taking the grace, the output is very little. We are not proving the fidelity of our life. We are infidels to the cause. Every day you need to teach the word of God and if you go to Iota and Karaira and if you go back to original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, we are not able to complete this one verse of, I of Psalms 54. For the first part of it, Far less we can think. We can go on to preach with so many long references. No, dear brethren, you cannot. Because the word of Lord God is so clear and true and specific, we cannot let go even Iota and Carrera. Then how much more we have to prove fidelity by daily teaching, minimum morning, one hour, evening, one hour. How much more you have to learn? How much more you have to get in? How much more you have to realize? And people would love to have all other silly solutions of this life to be the solutions for their family. Isn't it? You want to have some miracle drinks. You want to have some Ayurvedic. You want to have some health conscious diets. <laughs> the word of God is so clear, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. What all effort you have put, that effort, he says, it will be nothing till you could come back and put in your body the confession of your sins and learn the word of God, renovate the standards of your thinking. That's what we read yesterday. What is chaff to the wheat? Chaff is what you have in you, the vigor and valor. Wheat is what you have in you, the renovation of your thinking to your body. It is not the vigor and valor of your body that causes you to sustain when you're fit. No. It is what you think. It is what you renovate. That's what God the Father says. That's the wheat. And you don't have the wheat. You let go the wheat. You don't teach them the wheat. But you feed them with chaff. And they think they can sustain on this earth with all of these things which can make them to survive. No, dear brother, and at one end you have been deceived by not having the word of God, by not knowing the truth, because when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And at the other end, you are absolutely deceived if you don't renovate the standards of your thinking. That's the reason we want you to learn and to wake up and to become the disciples of the mind of Christ. Knowing the truth, the truth will set you free. And those who have been set free will become like the light luminaries shining in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations. And how do they shine like light luminaries? In the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations by holding forth the word of life. <laughs> and there is nothing on this earth could be the word of life or Zao Logai. You know why? Only the mind of Christ, the voice of the Spirit, the completed can of Scripture in the original languages of the Word of God could be alive. That's why the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher to dig, to give you, to make you to understand and realize that every day you survive by the Word of God. And believing Christ is not the end, that's the beginning. And just believing Christ and coming weekly once to the church is not at all your life. Meditating upon the word of the Lord our God day and night. Growing up from milk to bread, from bread to meat is your ultimate goal which you have been given on this earth. And you have to be well mature enough as New Testament scribes because you should have 15, minimum 15 spiritual children for you in your account. Then you, have achieved, then you have achieved, you have finished the work of the Lord. That's what he says. Seven, seven 
uh, shepherds and eight principal men. And the greater you haven't done them, you're proving God the Father is not able. You're proving again blite akol yakol to Yehovah Elohim. You're proving that God the Father has not destroyed his enemy. But over here when we look, Elohim is my helper. The vigor and valor of his bull energy so that we could be the disciples and in return, making our eyes fix upon Christ and his word, using the weapons of warfare to dig and every take, the weapons of warfare including the link between the head and the body as a pastor teacher, like the neck. And the one who has been bona fide gifted, male spiritual pastor teacher, not a female. You come to search with your eyes, you come to look. Having the fear of the Lord of a God, God the Father would guide you there. And it wouldn't be a burden for you, dear brother, and he would teach you graciously and freely because he wants the will of God the Father to be fulfilled, which is in First Timothy 2, for none to be perished, but everyone should come to the epinosis knowledge of the will of God. These two things he wants as a pastor teacher, the will of God the Father to be performed. How none could be perished? Until... You are coming up every day in the word of the Lord of a God. To graduate and you open up your mouth, you talk according to the things of the word of the Lord of a God and you perform them. Till then, really it is a great pleasure that none could be perished because you are having a vision that all men should be saved. Love covereth multitudes of sins. You forgive them, you go ahead. You win them over to God. You win them over to Christ. That's how you have over there the word. Because none should be perished. At the same time, you shall not be a stumbling block to others. But rather the drinking water which God the Father, which springs up in you into eternal life, he has given through the word of God. You should be alert. You should be growing up. And you should be springing up. And when you have this water, as the woman, she says in John 4, 15, so that I will not come to this pond, neither there is any more work for me to come and bail out the water. Now the two things meant to say what? When you find the true word of God, when you find... The right mind of Christ in the original language of scriptures, there is no need for it to go and drink other waters. Neither there is anything that you have to come and bail out from them because the ultimate is the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. No matter, the people may have the best of the best translations, you have to come back. What is the verb? What is the noun? What is the things pertaining to mood? Or what all the things in the tenses? You have to look into it accurately. Accurate analysis is what your life. Accurate analysis. And the greater you fail to accurately analyze the word of God and understand that for your thinking, the greater you are depending upon the hearsays of this world. And you cannot build up upon your feelings or your emotions, which is not of a solid ground to build up a firm foundation. The feelings, the emotions are not. You should have that which is solid. As the word says, heaven and the earth will vanish off, but his word will abide forever and forever. So it is. The solid firm foundation is the word of God, the mind of Christ. And that's what you have to fix your eyes. So this is the first part what we find. God is my helper. Elohim Azar. And then the next part he says. The Lord, this is who you know, it is called to be Adonai. Who is an Adonai? He is a mediator, he is a church. And who is the mediator? Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because 
this judge is the door of life because he is the one who restores life he is the goal of one that rules or judges which is to bring a pleasant and righteous life pleasant and righteous life to the people and he would deliver as one who restores life to his people that's what a judge or a mediator or adonai is all about adonai elohenu adonai akad when they cry they are looking for this judge christ jesus our lord our god is one he is the one who would restore back our life he is the one who brings to our life pleasant and righteous thing You want to have anything which is of a pleasant and righteous in your life dear brother and search Christ as I write so there in first Timothy between God and man one mediator that mediator is my lord and savior Jesus Christ that mediator is called over here to be Adonai and he is the one who restores life he is the one who goes to give you pleasant and righteous things in your life that which is upright every good and perfect gift which comes from the father of lights that's the reason to restore that which is pleasant and righteous every perfect and accurate gift comes from god the father because he knows what is there he knows what is the fact he knows what is the truth and we have such kind of a great lord of a god given for us calling to be adonai over here and he will uphold my soul Do you know why does he uphold and what does he uphold he upholds your soul why because soul is the process which has to be renovated soul is the thinking which has to be changed your mentality your evolution your emotion your norms and standards your soul has to completely change and if your soul doesn't change your outward appearance may appear to be glowing <laughs> because men look only outward dear brother but god but lord god looks your inward so people may be happy to look at your outward appearance but god the father uphold at your soul you know why does he uphold your soul <laughs> The word for uphold is very, very simple. It meant to say samak, S A M A K, and that meant to say to support. That meant to say to sustain, and it meant to say to have for you favorable circumstances, so that you could be established, you could stand fast, you could sustain. You know, he has this. so he wants you to sustain why the pictographical representation of it will give you the answer you don't find that in this word samak and the word samak over here for us is no matter you may have lot many treasures in your life as lord says enough is the evil you will have for that particular day and as we read that in exodus chapter 14 that lord god the father rise up the pearly and look at before the day could come to your life he look at the progress of your enemy and he says to moses stretch forth your hand we read the word naga make a rattling sound through the word of the lord of a god make a rattling sound through the verses of the bible doctrine your mind being fixed upon the word of the lord of a god make up your life to be pleasant and accurate that's what it teaches over there so we look in very simple words no matter whatever may be the pressure enough is the evil you have for your particular day he says do not worry i am there to deliver you out because already god the father has paid for us in full so he's going to make for you a favorable circumstances depending upon your heart the motivations of your thoughts imaginations behind your thoughts and what does he say over there if your heart and your thoughts and your imaginations match really to the glory of god the father he would make everything feasible for you 
everything favorable for you because you are now inclined to know my Christ. So whatever may be the pressure and the pressure which runs in your blood, that's what he says, the second alphabet of it. The pleasure, the pressure which could make your blood to pump up. He says, I have removed them. The pressures I am going to uphold. The things which are happening in your blood so that you could be disturbed and not to grow up into the will of God the Father, that also I would control them, I would make them to support, I will make them to sustain. I will make the things for you to be favorable for only one reason, he says. Why? I want you to look like a scribe. That's the palm of your hand. And the word Samek over here has three pictographical representation of this alphabet. Number one, pressure. Number two, the blood. And number three, the palm of your hand. Why, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ sustains us in spite of all the pressure that could happen in your blood, in your adrenaline pumping. Because he wants you to be like a scribe. That's very simple logic. He wants you to be like a scribe. That's why he puts that pressure. But Many are not recognizing Adonai, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came, who said, As I have overcome the world, he prayed for us. I pray, Father, they are not of the world, but they are kept in the world. Preserve them from evil. Because he said in John 17, For they are kept the truth. Preserving them from the evil, he says, Sanctify them through the truth. The word is the truth. Such a great life what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being a role model and a pattern for us having in us the sperm of Christ. He says, walk in me. Walk according to the standards of the truth that I have set forth for you. Do not deviate from this truth. You will have pressures. You will have in your blood the things which are against the word of God. So he says, do not worry. In spite of that, I samak, I uphold you, I, I make for you a favorable circumstances. For what reason? So that now you can grow up into grammatias. That's the very simple logic why Lord God the Father keeps every believer alive in spite of all the pressures of your life. Therefore, if Lord God be with us, who can be against us? Do you think, is there anyone who can be against the word of God, against the mind of Christ, against the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost? Therefore, he says in 1 John 4, 4, greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And that's the very great reason why we have been told, do not fear. It is Yehovah Elohim who goeth before you to fight the battles of the Lord. We need not fear, we need not worry, we need not make up our things according to the fear of this man. The pagans, the way how they work out, he said, they look upon for the food what they eat, they look upon for the bread what they eat. But he said, you do not fear. You have for you Christ. First seek the righteousness and the kingdom of God the Father, then all these things shall be added unto you. What a great lesson we have in God. As the word we have been reading in Hebrews 12 too, looking unto the author and finisher of our faith, Christ our Lord. The same thing Peter, when he was looking in Christ and he was able to walk upon the water. When he removed his eyes, he was sinking in the water. The same thing with us. When you remove your eyes from the word of the Lord of a God and you be far away from the word of the Lord of a God, which is the only water for you, from your salvation, from the mentoring ministry of the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and from the ministry of what you have over here, the word of God, Ephesians 5, 26 through 27 or 28. 
you have on this earth waters which are able to sink you but we have only the water the word of god which is able to build you looking upon christ looking into christ peter was able to walk that's the only water we can walk upon this water the water of deceiving nature the water which makes you to be easily sunk it drowns you in in order to be walking upon the waters in the sense the teachings of this man the teachings of this world the teachings of this cosmos thinking as we read that from lewis perry chaff of all in two in page number 99 and 100 about satan what all you have over here all the thinking of satan starting with infotainment starting with your sports starting with your channels of every mannerism of tv or, or serials or having your movies you know man is built upon this they have been stuck upon such waters he looks something he tries to absorb something he loves to act something looking upon movies he wants to be such a hero and now you have all the silly stupid things happening in and around the world like tiktok and they have all the stupid things in the instagrams to be uploaded now they are not having the reality uh, they they realize the reality is not the movie so they want to make up their own styles and stunts and what not you find that in the youtube you find that in your smartphones and they want to prove this is reality this is the truth this is the fact but even that is a lie infotainment they allow to have something of information which is a lie the only fact why god the father sustains you in all the pressure is to learn bible doctrine so that you could be a scribe that's why he upheld it if you are alive tomorrow it is the will of god the father that he wants you to grow up into scribe because you are already a disciple believing in christ and believing in christ being a disciple that doesn't mean to say you are grown up there should be a growth grown up how do you grow up you grow up by becoming that which is a grammati as a mature man in the word of the lord of a god a mature thinking in the mind of christ that's the way you grow up but if you are not growing up that meant to say you don't love my god and there is no way why lord god the father should sustain you tomorrow Yet he remembers us that we are of dust, even the best of the best are worst in the sight of the Lord. Yet he comes up with grace so that he can find in you to be like a penitent sinner and you confess your sins and get back to the work of the Lord. For that cause he sustains you. You are enjoying his goodness. And God the Father has given to you a greater judge, your own judge. consciousness who could judge you therefore he says in first us corinthians 11 30 and 31 if we would judge ourselves we shall not be judged the self judgment of the believer before partaking the elements of the lord at one end and every time for you the confession of your sins through reborn because we do sin either by thought word or deed 1 john 1 9 you should judge yourselves to know whether you are reprobates or in faith or not examine yourselves so dear brethren here god the father has given them to us why you are sustaining why you should be protected and he upholds you every day in spite of the pressures you get in your life in spite of the things that are happening in your adrenaline pump of your blood lot of pressure in your blood leads to heart failure what you call that to be blood pressure isn't it bp what you call that high bp is a danger low bp is also a danger for you <laughs> high diabetic is a danger low diabetic is also a danger for you because your thinking is rotten inside you are not able to realize why have you been sustained by the lord why he smacks you you haven't understood why he smacks you why he protects you why he makes you the favorable circumstances 
And you love to have your own oh, world running along to say, this is what I do, I will be better. This is what I take the medicine, I will be good. The only medicine for your life on this earth is the word of God, dear brother. And whether you believe it, take it, consider it or not. The only medicine is the mind of Christ. He sustains you on this earth for the very purpose, in a very simple way, what he teaches. You have to join as disciples and you have to grow up into grammatias. That's the way and the reason why he sustains you. Joining as disciples, growing up into grammatias. That's the way he sustains you. That's the way he protects you. That's the way he does his work. And you have been so foolish and ignorant even to understand Matthew 13, 52. Joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias. Grammatias are the people who write the word of the Lord of a God. Who are the New Testament theologians. That's the Greek word, grammatias. And the theologians are the people who are well aware about the word of God. Not in the knowledge of your head. But in the knowledge of the fear of the Lord of a God. In obeying his mandates, in fulfilling his work. People know very well, knowledge puffeth up. <laughs> they become headstrong. The fear of the Lord of a God, the greater you know the knowledge, the humbler you become, because you realize not many men doing the work of the Lord. And you become like a weeping prophet. You cry to them out. Saying, come back and look, what is the right will of God? Don't waste your grace. Don't waste the time which has been bestowed upon you. Perform the mind of Christ. Look unto the glory of Christ. But you don't believe that. You don't look into that. And you think you're sustaining because you're fit. <laughs> and men, to understand an example, what has happened? One of a film star recently, maybe 10 days back. A very well man at the age of 46 got a sudden cardiac arrest. And the entire Karnataka, South India, where we reside, it has been shocked. 20 lakh people who came for the burial. Because he is a great star son. And he has done a lot many good social works. Until date, they are searching out, they are looking out. Even through YouTube and other channels, if you can find it out, you can find it out. How it could be sudden cardiac arrest. The man who was so fit. The man who was able to jump along and could do such stunts and could be such kind of a great dancer. How he could die. <laughs> this man did not understand. It is in the hand of the Lord of a God. As he said, a rich and foolish man, you thought you have filled your bands. You set your soul, eat, drink and enjoy. But today at night, if I take up your soul, what you will do? Before the evil days could come upon your life, he says in Ecclesiastes 12.1, Know your Creator in your youth. And God sustains you to give you grace to believe in Christ. If ever you have believed in Christ, he says the second work for you. Come back and grow up into grammatias. Take up your cross every day. Follow my Christ. If the ministers, if they're blowing the trumpets properly, if they're making the work of the Lord of a God to happen it properly, it would be a great delight and awesome thing to look. Even such unbelievers having great faith in reality of the truth and the holiness of the life, what we walk, even they also have the fear of the Lord. That's what we find over there in Deuteronomy 4, 6, when he says, the nations will come to know there is not such kind of a great nation which is wise and understanding because they have unto them the word of God. And knowing the word of God is your wisdom. And even unbelievers will come to believe. Even unbelievers will come to fear and tremble. But the men who are pastor teachers, the one who should blow the trumpet, if they don't make a proper sound, sound as he says in 1 Corinthians 15, how they would be prepared for the battles. That's what it is happening today. And such kind of a man whom to be noted as innocent in the sight of these people in Karnataka or South India, where we say, or the Dravidian terror or terrority, where we say. He says, he's been dead. And people are shocked. 
if you would have shined like the wisdom and if you would have had to make known to this people in truth and integrity of the word of God as they would worship the stones when you walk in truth when you walk in integrity when you, every Christian would prove that they have been sustained by the power of God the Father to become a scribe and the greater they would have the burden of the Lord our God carrying the yoke of the mind of Christ while they are in youth as we read that from Lamentations 3.27 they would sit silent they would know that the burden of the Lord our God is to win souls and they would know how to deal with such souls rather than becoming stumbling blocks that's what we read the word helicrenia sky aproscopi in philippians 1 they would have known how to deal sensibly they would have learned how to be executing the judgments and they would have been very cautious enough because their stumbling blocks would make such men not to believe in christ and no matter however God the Father is sustaining upon them grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. Day by day they go harder like the way Pharaoh went. And they would say when I have all the things with me a great health, a great life, peak of my career. Why we should believe Christ? Show me any Christian who is like Christ first they would ask. But so called under the flattering titles, you yourselves are not Christians to be worthy enough to be noted upon your tongue because you are not disciples. Far less you could grow up into grammatias and understand the burden of it. A nominal conventional Christians, yearly Christians, weekly Christians, monthly Christians you are. And you're never happy. To realize the burden which God the Father has given to you. Because you think you are a minister or a father or a pastor for you. Among these unbelievers you walk along <laughs> trying to prove your integrity so that you can have some discount in the retail store. So that you can have the legalized things to be still legal and people should fear. But where is Christ shining in you? And because of you becoming a hurdle, such unbelieving men, they are not able to believe in Christ and they do not understand that the soul is lost forever. Without Christ, where is your entrance into heaven? If your names are not been recorded in the book of the life of the Lamb of our Lord of our God, Revelation 20 verses 11 through 15, two books, the book of works and the book of life, all the sincere, innocent unbelievers who are pious and godly in this world, but without Christ. The names are recorded in the book of works. But those who believe in Christ, their names are recorded in the book of life and not sincere works because you cannot get your salvation by gold or silver. The salvation is not been purchased by your good deeds. The only one good work which Christ our Lord of God has done on the cross by faith alone in Christ alone. You march ahead, you believe there and you get into it. You receive it. It's a relationship. Christianity is not and never a religion. People have stupidly defined Christianity as a religion, dear brethren. Christianity is a relationship with God the Father by the saving work of Christ Jesus our Lord of God on the cross, what he did for us. That's Christianity. Religion is what where man tries to get the approbation of God, appreciation of God, approval of God by his good works. But all of our good works are a filthy rags, says Isaiah 64, 6. But the logic over there is not filthy rags. All our good works are your ministral cloth, ministral sickness of our orientation. What do we do with that? The translators fail to translate it correctly. It is ministral sickness. So your works are been your book. You are entered there, but not in the book of life. And whose names are not been written in the book of life? They are destined to the eternal like a fire. And that you perpetual forever. Whether you believe it or not, dear brethren, 
the words that have been you may say those words are recorded for you in the bible so you talk about the bible but what is bible bible is the mind of christ bible is jehovah elohim itself he is its revolution of him and heaven and the earth will vanish off but his word abideth forever and forever that's the bible you may love to have it or take it or not. We don't care. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Even You may say, who has come from the dead to know? You have a parable for us in Luke 16, the rich man and the Lazarus. And God the Father has shown through his son resurrection 40 days over here how they would be in the resurrection body. Is there anyone with such kind of a resurrection body or such kind of a molecular structure in any among your gods on this world? No one, dear brethren, accept my Christ. Therefore, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Before Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he is the only Lord of a God, and the sooner the better you wake up, why you have been sustained in this grace, why you have been samak. And Lord God the Father all the time samaks your soul. Because what you think and what you do according to your soul, that's what your body acts. Now your soul, before believing in Christ, is neutral. After believing in Christ, it is having a partner, activated human spirit, or the spirit which goes to live with God the Father forever. And now this human spirit is been in return interlinked with Lord God the Holy Ghost, so that we have been said, do not grieve, do not squelch, do not wax, do not lie, do not resist. But rather all the time, if ever you live, you live in the spirit. If ever you breathe, you breathe in the spirit. If ever you peripata or you peripata or in the spirit. If ever you make your progress, make sure that all the time you are having in a marching order in the fellowship of of Lord God the Holy Ghost because that Lord God the Holy Ghost will teach to your human spirit in return your human spirit can teach to your soul and your soul being transformed from human viewpoint into divine viewpoint now your body would become pious or you so be unbeliever diligent enough for any any type of trial or persecution so that you can win Christ through your life and make minimum seven disciples and eight principal men Therefore, God the Father samaks your soul, not the body, not the things pertaining to ruach. But the word over here, what we find is nepesh. And the soul is nothing but every vigor and valor of your mouth when you go through the proper process of munching. And soul is the whole person of a body, the body, the breath, the mind. He takes care of the vigor and valor, the virality of you first. The breath through your mouth and the munching process, your mind. These are the three things what we find. Your soul takes care of your body. Your soul takes care of your breath. Because whatsoever the things that you eat will not defile, he said. But the things that come out from your heart is what it defiles. The evil comes there from your heart. And now you have what? Your mind, your munching process. In your mind, he says, think upon doctrine. According to the word of God, you live. If not, he's going to whip you and lash you out because of his hatred and punishment since you're not thinking in your mind the word of God. As your body requires food and food is for the belly and belly is for the food, as he said. The uh, food is the belly is for the food and the food is for the belly. So your body is there only now to get in the word of God. That's why you have been sustained by the grace of God in his soul. And by that time in every individual believer in Christ. So the vigor and virality of your body, the things that you open up your mouth to breathe in, and the things pertaining to the munching process of your mind, God the Father makes his judge or Adonai, which is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to samak or to protect under any pressure in your blood so that you could be growing up into a scribe. So, dear brethren, in Psalms 54 4, behold, be careful, he's going to inspect Ra'a. Take a very careful look. Because people may think we are talking about the Bible. No, dear brethren, we are talking the Creator, the one who created you. You may be an unbeliever, you may be a believer. We don't care. 
Bible is the Creator speaking to you. Whether they may be meant to be alive to take it or they love to consider it or not, we don't mind. But Creator is what He says. Behold, Elohim is Azar, is my Azar, is my helper. And the very second word, what he teaches to us, Adonai, Samak, Nepesh. And why does he protect you? He says in Deuteronomy 4, 6, so that you could understand the reason that you have to be a wise one, you have to be a great one, you have to be the one which the word of Lord God demands. And the nations in the world should understand that we are wise and great in understanding because we have for us the word of God, the mind of Christ, the voice of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. So he teaches over here for us in Psalms 54, 4. What shall we then say to these things? God for us, who against us? The same thing in Psalms 111, verse 6. The Lord God is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? In 118.7, The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. The desire of them that hate you all the time are the fallen angels. Because they know you shall know the doctrine, you shall trample their head, Satan, under your feet. Therefore they hate you. The only one that hates you on this earth is Satan. Besides that, your own flesh, which is ignorant, to carry you across every day and follow my Christ. In Psalms 118, verse 13, You have thrust sore at me, that I might fall, but the Lord help me. And over here we find, in First Chronicles 12, 18, Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, who was chief of the captains, and he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, you son of Jesse, peace, Peace be unto thee, and peace be to the helpers, for thy God helpeth thee, who helpeth the Lord God. Then David received them and made them captains of the bands. That's what we read long back over here in First Chronicles 12. In Isaiah 41.10 it stands written, Fear you not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help thee. Yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In Isaiah 42, 1, which we have to exegete, he says, Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighteth, have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgments to the Gentiles. Again, he says in Isaiah chapter 50, verses 7 through 9, For the Lord God will help me, therefore I shall not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moths shall eat them up. <laughs> Your enemies is what is describing. He says that, Behold, the Lord God will help me. Now who is the one that shall condemn me? All shall wax old as a garment, tearing apart. <laughs> the moth shall eat them up. Again in Hebrews 13, 6, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. It is not only the man, even the fallen angels, who are all constantly trying to deviate your mind from the word of God. So, dear brethren, if Lord God the Father upholdeth your soul for the work of his glory, we are not here to waste our grace in stupid things, but rather we should renovate the standards of our thinking, so that the unbelieving men on this earth could realize and could understand, as he says in Deuteronomy 4, 6, Keep therefore and do them, that is what in verse 5 he says, the statutes, the prescription demands what all God the Father has taught, for this is your wisdom and understanding. In the sight of the nations, that's what it is, dear brethren, it is a show-off to the nations, show-off to such unbelieving stars who have been dead. It is a show-off to the world. So he says, 
your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all the statutes the prescription demands of the word of god and they should say not like the way how moses told in numbers 14:6 what the nations will talk about that blithe yakol yakol is jehovah no now this nation should say that's what you have been saved that's what you have been upholded that's what you have been kept alive the nations will say surely this is a great nation and a wise and understanding people surely this nation is great it's a wise and understanding people therefore dear brethren he says in job 28 28 about this wisdom we don't have time we shall look into that tomorrow but i will give you the summary He says in Job twenty eight twenty eight, and unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. In Psalms nineteen seven, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The simple one will be wise. Hundred and eleven ten of Psalms, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's wisdom. A good understanding have they all that do the commandments. His praise endureth for ever. The favorite passage of Psalms one nineteen verses ninety seven through hundred, but over here we have ninety eight. He says, "Though through the commandments you have made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for my for the testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. The word keep is called to be not sere." under any pressure no matter whatever it is i have all the time in me the thinking of christ and he wants to say what the word of lord god is all about that i want to execute in proverbs 17 we have the fear of the lord is the beginning of the knowledge but fools despise who are the fools these are called to be nabals to be nothing they think they are anything but they are nothing because they haven't been the disciples to look into the vigor and valor of the alpha energy which god the father gives us through grace so fools are the people what the word of lord god teaches to us to be nabal and then fools despise wisdom and instruction in proverbs 14:8 the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way but the folly of fools here the word fools again is called to be casales that meant to say they have not grown up into grammatias or in case if they have grown up into grammatias because of the pressures of this life they haven't made disciples that's what 15 children of spiritual one they have failed so the folly of the fools is decide <coughs> excuse me in jeremiah 8:9 the wise men are ashamed they are dismayed and taken lo the reason he says they have rejected the word of the lord and what wisdom is in there <coughs> today dear brethren people are in search of wisdom <coughs> excuse me but the true wisdom is the word of god so here as the fools who have despised the wisdom so much of the present christendom are looking to be in the standards of such every ill nature the hebrew word every ill is nothing but foolish nature so to be without anything such as nothing these people they are even such the present christendom is running but they don't have the wisdom of the lord in exodus when he says i have given them the kakma he has given them the instructions how they have to do and the very next word what he talks about the wisdom is found for us over here in Deuteronomy 4:6 and from here on we look the people who have rejected wisdom even the new testaments we find in 2 Timothy 3:15 wise unto salvation and the ups and downs of the people who have rejected wisdom who haven't believed Christ So all these things he records there for us to teach us the importance of the mind of Christ. And yet God the Father comes up with his grace every day to smack you for the reason to take care of your soul. To make sure that your soul believes in Christ. And to make sure now after believing in Christ having in you the activated human spirit which is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine 
and search for the man today who have been found in our pulpits not being born again yet yet they try to come and teach the word of god because they think it's an intellectual thing they think they can read the way how they read news editors you know the news editing men they want to have some subject to read so they think they can take care of the bible and they can read because it's a printed news <laughs> but really they don't have the burden of making disciples of all the nations neither they make the men of the churches to grow up into grammatiers because these are kleptes who don't have the care to instruct you but rather they break down your confidence and they make you to believe to lose your confidence and why you come to the church having your party difference in the church ex committee party present committee party unfair elections party again renewing the same committees and parties you know all the stupid things you yourselves are hurdles to your own men far less you could be a light to unbelievers and the men in the pulpits today who wants to say that they will be the authority of the church like the committee members falling behind a helpless woman constantly seeking and searching them to hug asking them to hug and though being a mother of four children wants to have a fair such are the men who are there for you today in your pulpits where is integrity where is the truth and how will an unbeliever believe in my christ he would say christianity is good bible is good because of the evidences of christians for whom bible hasn't transformed the bible hasn't made them to metamorphose how they could be you know what you reflect back in your life that's what you prove your god you reflect back in your life to unbelievers when they access you they would say your god has transformed you only so much you're not pure in your morality you're not pure in your talk you're not true to the words of god so they would say if i also would come and join your religion i will be also one among like you but i will not be the person what the things pertaining to the word of god is exactly demanding you that's what happens dear brother it's very simple logic looking upon you they would say they reject christ christians are worst christianity is good but they don't come to read the bible because they think if bible could do such an effect for a believer in such a way what effect it could do to me because satan puts that question in the mind of every unbeliever you are a believer in such a way of life you are not talking about the money of prosperity you are a believer being protected to grow up into grammatias to have the peace of god with you all the time to be the beloved of lord of a god all the time but you are not using it peaceably with christ you are not transformed in that peaceably with god then when an unbeliever looks unto you he says the same thing what best or what good benefit you had from christianity so that now you are asking me to come and join christianity not in the terms of money in the terms of your vigor and valor in the terms of your thinking in the terms of your humbleness in the terms of your great sacrifice in the terms of your great tolerance like Christ Jesus our Lord of God said what do you have that you don't have that then why I should believe in Christ is what unbelievers also will claim looking upon your life tomorrow and that Christ our Lord of God come at one more day as Psalm 54:4 Elohim azar Adonai samak nepe He comes up to uphold you. He comes up to give you grace. For what? At least today you renovate. Today is a day of salvation, as I said. Today you renovate. Now is the time. Don't postpone it. 
the greater you reject to look into the truth the greater you reject to become wise the greater god the father will raise the question as in jeremiah 8 what wisdom is there in them they have rejected the word of god lo they have despised the mind of christ dear brethren think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as lord god the holy ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without christ without hope and without eternal life in audible telling to lord god the father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my christ my lord my rock my savior that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth is for very simple believing christ you shall be saved whereas for the believer the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine by which you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free and for the pastor teaches the greatest matter is to carry so on like on herald the word in season and out of season because the diamond from my witnesses where we have been called the number one diamond from my witnesses in welling trinity followed by bible in our hands and number two diamond from my witnesses our hearers if there are no hearers dear brother and not worry besides nature the entire angelic host will be our witnesses and what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter however the chips may fall whether they hear of or be whether they come in to take it or not it shows purely they haven't feared my lord they fear only with the lips as in first samuel chapter 15 in verse 23 rejection to hear and obey the voice of the lord of a god is as good as you have in your own home guards of your own nature so we come and ask you again and again fear god give that glory which is due unto him and the greater you examine not yourselves whether you are of doctrine or not the greater when you reject to know that you are reprobates you are disguising yourselves as christians but you are reprobate hypocrites and that reprobate hypocrites are also found in the real of what you make yourselves to be in christianity as pastor teachers those who handle the word of the lord of a god if they themselves are corrupted how will be the church that's what we find in that wilmington guide till to the 15th century it sought to have an attack upon the bible but it could not then from when the theological colleges have been started so the attack upon the man who would teach the word of god upon the standards not falling to the mind of christ so he records over there in his page attack upon the pulpits attack upon the seminaries if we would change the people who should not talk according to the word of god and we should inculcate in their mind that which could be to the itching ears are oriented to the false pastor teachers if we could change their mind if we could make them not to believe these things if we could completely change it off then the preachers will teach that which is vain and useless that which is worthless that which not matter a thing then quite obviously all the things pertaining to the word of god would be diminished and one find a buried that's what in jeremiah 23 as we noted they have made my name to be forgotten they have exchanged that my name to be instead of jehovah elohim they exchanged it for baal exact pattern what we are looking because the ministers were coming being trained in theological colleges are not burdened to rightly divide the word of truth though they have been sustained by the grace of god they may be great in the sight of men you have to be great in the sight of god as faithful ministers handling the word of god the greater you reject the greater you neglect you may be thinking day by day you may pass down the grace of god according to the lusts of your flesh 
But at the judgment seat of Christ, you are answerable. What have you done? Dear brethren, be careful. Do not let go the valuable, matchless grace of Lord our God for the filthy liquor of your lusts. But rather rebound and get back to the will of God the Father according to His glory. So dear brethren, think over these issues. If we, being trained properly under the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost, our duty would be to realize to be sustained in the grace of the Lord our God in making disciples of all the nations. And people may listen to these things or not, but God the Father knows to keep this as a witness and to make you all to understand what is the burden of the Lord, the Master Lord of my Christ, in making you all to be grown up grammatias and in having in your life for every individual believer seven disciples and eight principal men. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to have fellowship with thee, O Lord. Your infallible and ignorant word in Psalms 54, 4, behold, you are going to inspect. And we are making them to realize, O Lord, Elohim is our help. And Elohim, Lord of our God, who has been the salvation, who has been all the time for us through Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God. He, in the form of Adonai, is the upholder of our soul. So, dear brethren, Elohim Azar and Adonai, as he goes to protect Samak, our soul, Nepesh. We are thankful for this great work by Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ so that none should be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his work. And with the great glory of your word, we come to be thankful, to learn more and more, to edify and to reflect your glory, your grace to this people. To this extent, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us, and to go ahead to realize if God could be for us, who can be against us. In Christ much less pure less gracious name we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and lighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask sovereign Lord. Amen.